Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. You find yourself powerless? On today's show, we'll Do experience you? the impact of the Premrod Foundation's true? Peace Education Program Is that true? on inmates in a South you African have a prison. And we'll learn how a United Nations program is empowering women through a new gender equality model in Rwanda. Then, we'll hear an inspiring music video by Monica Pasquale, entitled, You Can't Kill the Light. And we'll but see a we video with a unique perspective entitled, I Am Not Black, You Are Not White. See, Finally, we'll profile the important environmental work of activist and Goldman Prize recipient, Maxima Acuna from Peru. We begin today's program with a presentation on the Prem Rawat Foundation's Peace Education Program. Created to help people discover their inner resources, such as strength, choice, and hope, as well as to explore the possibility of personal peace. Now in 17 countries throughout the world, the program has been presented to a wide variety of organizations and community groups. In today's segment, we experience the success of the Peace Education Program with the inmates of Zonderwater Prison in South Africa. that international material to see that peace ambassador. I can't wait to see him. You find yourself powerless? Do you? That's not true. Is that true? You have a secret weapon. I shouldn't be saying this, but you have a secret weapon. And it is the most powerful weapon on the face of this earth. And that weapon is your choice. You, it's all yours. Nobody can touch it. Choose peace over chaos. Choose love over hate. Choose respect over disregard. Choose clarity over confusion. And you will find, discover your power. And that's the same power you're going to need when you get out of here. My name is Daniel Mahwere and I'm going to do a poem about peace. Is freedom a puzzle or freedom a quiz? Is freedom a picnic or freedom a celebration? What is freedom and what is the meaning of freedom? Freedom is something a person can feel even if he's incarcerated. Peace. What is peace? Peace is something that makes us one thing. Peace is what you are. Peace makes you feel the best. Peace is universal. Peace is divine. Peace is healing. Peace is spiritual power. Peace is our culture. Peace is therapeutic. Peace cannot be so long as anger and hatred are alive. Peace cannot be so long as appreciation and inner strength are not there. Peace cannot be so long as love and trust are not pillars of happiness. Never underestimate the enemies of peace. Behold, peace is love. You want peace? Good. Do something about it. Claim peace and take responsibility. Peace is strengthening you by sympathizing you with your strength, not with your weakness. Indeed, you won't succeed without peace. You have a right to peace. Peace is a journey of thousand miles and it must be taken one step at a time. Indeed, peace is the beginning of your forever. My countrymen, 
my countrymen, feel harmony, not harm. Create peace, not problems. Correct yourself, not corrupt yourself. Remember, you're wearing corrections, not corruption. Is that incarceration and claustrophobic not enough? Peace is rich, real, sweet, and soul uplifting. Swallow your pride and then that peace begins with you. I'd like to thank Mr. Primwat for changing our lives. You know, coming here in Sonorvatar, Maximum Prison, it really changed people's life a lot. He cannot change our circumstances, but he can help us to choose our attitude. We now join Positive Swiss correspondent, Ron Sato. Traditionally, Rwandan women are confined to domestic chores, with their husbands in charge of all household income. Now, the Rwandan government, with support from the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development, is empowering women to be equally involved in the management of the family's finances, creating a new gender equality model for the country. Like most farmers here in Kirehe district of eastern Rwanda, Epiphany Mukamorenzi is up with the sun. She and her husband Bosco work closely together during the daily morning milking session. This would have been unthinkable just a few years ago when Epiphany was confined to household chores while Bosco exclusively handled anything to do with their income. Things started to change when they took part in a livestock training program five years ago. <laughs> The training Epiphany and her husband received is part of a government project called Quamp, which aims to increase farmers' incomes and food security. Supported by IFAD, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and Heifer International, qualifying families receive livestock and are trained to care for them. But it doesn't stop there. Everyone who receives livestock is also trained on gender equality. <laughs> So far, about 6,000 families have gone through this training. It is essential for them to learn about the link between gender equality in the household and poverty. Gender muri project kwamp ntago twayibagiwe kuko ntago twayibagirwa kuko uruhare rw'umugore mu cyaro ni runini mu kuzamuka k'ubukungu bw'urugo bityo mu buhinzi no mu bworozi abagore bakora imirimo myinshi bityo ntago twabibagirwa kubahugura no guhugura abagabo It's all part of the Rwandan government's nationwide push for gender equality the East African country is the first in the world where women hold a parliamentary majority and new laws have given women rights to land, inheritance, employment opportunities and education. We can't do, talk about gender equality without talking the independence, the financial independence of women. So we want our women to be economic, economically empowered so that uh, they can face their future. To help women become more economically empowered, the Quamp Project is also trying out something new. It is called the Gender Action Learning System, or GALS. Raymond has been working with couples to map out a common vision using counseling, drawings, and visuals. 
Together, they have developed a shared strategy and measurable goals for their family's development. <laughs> And with Rwanda's focus on gender equality, anything is possible for many women. A recent study estimates that global GDP could increase by as much as $28 trillion by 2025 if more women, like Lidavine and Epiphany, participated in economic growth. And it looks like Rwanda is on the way to achieving that. This report was produced by Okwi Oko for the United Nations. Now we'll hear an inspiring anthem celebrating the long-lasting power of the world's social movements, entitled You Can't Kill the Light, performed by Monica Pasquale. We build a fire You can blow hard, but you can't kill it. We come together, sometimes we fight. You can knock us down, but you can't kill light. You can't kill light. You can't kill light.
Tritzea is a philosopher with a message concerning the universality of the human race as presented in his powerful video, I am not black, you are not white. I am not black. I mean, that's what the world calls me, but it's not me. I didn't come out of my mother's womb saying, hey everybody, I'm black. No, I was taught to be black. And you were taught to call me that, along with whatever you call yourself. It's just a label. See, from birth, the world force feeds us these labels. And eventually, we all swallow them. We digest and accept the labels, never, ever doubting them. But there's one problem. Labels are not you, and labels are not me. Labels are just labels. But who we truly are is not skin deep. See, when I drive my car, no one would ever confuse the car for me. Well, when I drive my body, why do you confuse me for my body? It's my body. Get it? Not me. Let me break it down. See, our bodies are just cars that we operate and drive around. The dealership we call society decided to label mine the black edition, yours the Irish or white edition. And with no money down, 0% APR and no test drive, we were forced to own these cars for the rest of our lives. Forgive me, but I fail to see the logic or pride in defining myself or judging another by the cars we drive. Because who we truly are is found inside. Listen, I'm not here to tell you how science has concluded that genetically we're all mixed and race in the human species doesn't exist or how every historian knows that race was invented in the 15th century to divide people from each other and it has worked perfectly. No, I'm not here to lecture. I just want to ask one question. Who would you be if the world never gave you a label? Never gave you a box to check? Would you be white, black, Mexican, Asian, Native American, Middle Eastern, Indian? No, we would be one. We would be together. No longer living in the era of calling human beings black people or white people. These labels that will forever blind us from seeing a person for who they are, but instead seeing them through the judgmental, prejudicial, artificial filters of who we think they are. And when you let an artificial label define yourself, then my friend, you have chosen smallness over greatness and minimized yourself, confined and divided yourself from others. And it is an undeniable fact that where there is division, there will be conflict and conflict starts wars. Therefore, every war has started over labels. It's always us versus them. So the answer to war, racism, sexism, and every other ism is so simple that every politician has missed it. It's the labels. We must rip them off. Isn't it funny how no baby is born racist, yet every baby cries when they hear the cries of another? No matter the gender, culture, or color, proving that deep down we were meant to connect and care for each other. That is our mission, and that is not my opinion. That is the truth in a world that has sold us fiction. Please listen, labels only distort our vision, which is why half of those watching this will dismiss it or feel resistance and conflicted. But just remember, so did the caterpillar before it broke through its shell and became the magnificent butterfly. Well, these labels are our shells and we must do the same thing so we can finally spread our wings. Human beings were not meant to be slapped with labels like groceries and supermarkets. DNA cannot be regulated by the FDA. We were meant to be free and only until we remove them all and stop living and thinking so small will we be free to see ourselves and each other for who we truly are. So what can we do in the face of all this madness and chaos? What is the solution? We can love. Trying to control the mind is like trying to flatten out water. You just make more waves. And now we'll hear from Positive Spins correspondent, Brenda Lynn Martin. In our next segment, we profile environmental activist and Goldman Prize recipient, Maxima Acuna. 
a farmer in Peru's Northern Highlands. Maxima successfully stood up for her right to peacefully live on her own land, sought by the Newmont Buenaventura Mining Company. This is Laguna Azul. I've lived near the lake for almost 20 years. I walk my sheep and other animals here. There is water everywhere here. It has always been like this. Our lakes provide water for the communities downstream. In 1994, Maxima Acuna bought land and built a small home. That same year, just 10 miles away, Colorado's Newmont Mining Corporation opened the Yanacucha Mine. It's Latin America's largest open pit mine and one of the world's most profitable. The Yanacocha mine has destroyed our water sources and drained our lakes. Our water has turned an orange color, and there is cadmium, lead, and arsenic. Maxima's land provides direct access to additional gold and copper deposits in the surrounding plateaus. Newmont plans to drain Laguna Azul and three other lakes to develop a new mine called Conga. Maxima stands in the way of billions of dollars of gold and copper on this mountaintop. They came and asked me to sell them my land. But that's an absurd idea. I will never sell it. When the offer to buy the land didn't work, the mining company tried to evict Maxima claiming that she and her husband were not legitimate owners. I stepped out with the title to my land, and I said, gentlemen, there are no grounds to kick me out. My husband and I bought this land with the sweat off our backs. I was crying, and I said, please don't do this to me. Where am I supposed to go? I was attacked by the police and the company's security team. When Maxima's daughter tried to stop him, the two were beaten and left unconscious. The mining company made up some ridiculous charges. They accused them of being illegal squatters on their own land. Then they took them to court. The court punished Maxima and her husband with a suspended prison sentence of nearly three years and fined them almost $2,000. Maxima appealed and used the verdict to galvanize community support. Local citizens organized themselves as the guardians of the lakes, camping on Maxima's land to protect her and Laguna Azul. After two years of appeals, the courts overturned Maxima's prison sentence and stopped her eviction. This legal victory stalled Newmont's development of the Conga mine. When my lawyer told me they ruled in our favor, I was thrilled because I thought the conflict was finally over and I would be able to live at peace again on my land. Maxima's bravery has been recognized throughout Latin America. She received a special award from Peru's National Coordinator for Human Rights for her activism. Pero fue peor. But now things are worse because they won't leave us alone, not even for one second. They literally have my house surrounded. They even build a fence around it. But I will never kneel before Yanacocha. And I am never going to give up. No way. 
for outstanding environmental achievement for South and Central America. The 2016 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Maxima Acuna, Cajamarca, Peru. Well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy. I'm Ron Sato. I'm Brenda Lynn Martin. And we want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive news. Positive news. With positive news. You find yourself powerless? Do you? Is not true. That's not true. You have a secret weapon. I shouldn't be saying this, but you have a secret weapon. And it is the most powerful weapon on the face of this earth. And that weapon is your choice. You, it's all yours. Nobody can touch it. Choose peace over chaos. Choose love over hate. Choose respect over disregard. Choose clarity over confusion. And you will find, discover your power. Thank you.